Hey, what's going on, tech enthusiasts? Bowie HD here, and you're watching Last Week in Tech, the show where we discuss all of the top tech news stories last week, this week. You can send me your tech news story suggestions using the LWIT hashtag on Twitter, or you can follow me on Twitter at BowHD and send me your suggestions personally, but uh, I prefer the hashtag, so let's use that LWIT hashtag. With that said, let's jump right into it. Earth 2.0 was discovered by NASA's Kepler telescope. Kepler 452b orbits a very similar distance from its star, it has a 60% larger radius than Earth, and scientists believe it's the most Earth like planet they've seen yet. If you're looking for a vacation, maybe you want to take some time away from work go to another planet just to relax a little bit. Bad news is that it's 1,400 light years away. Good news is that it might support life. Last week, we also got news that Google was going to end its forced integration with Google Plus and YouTube. In the coming weeks, comments will no longer require a Google Plus account. And as of right now, comments made on YouTube will no longer show up on Google Plus and vice versa. And in the near future, users will be able to delete the Google Plus account they were forced to make in order to comment on YouTube and they won't lose any of their personal data. I post to Google Plus and I post to YouTube frequently, but if Google needs to integrate Google Plus into YouTube in order for Google Plus to be successful, I think that's saying something. If Google Plus fails and dies because it's no longer integrated with YouTube, then it fails and dies. I mean, it's as simple as that. Generally speaking, a social media network should be used by people who actively enjoy using it, who like the service, not people who are forced to use it. That just never ends well. And I guess really that could be applied to a lot of different areas, not just social media sites. <laughs> In other news, Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking are seriously concerned about killer robots, specifically artificial intelligence. They have warned that a military artificial intelligence arms race could soon develop if preventative measures are not taken now. The group of scientists, including Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking, warned in an open letter presented to the International Joint Conference on AI in Buenos Aires, the stakes are high, autonomous weapons have been described as the third revolution in warfare after gunpowder and nuclear arms. Now, of course, this is a very serious issue because it's only a matter of time, maybe a few years, before someone straps a machine gun or some sort of weapon on top of a drone to ultimately create a self-piloted bomber drone. As tech becomes more readily available and it becomes cheaper, this is only going to become more and more of a problem and a threat. It just makes me sort of question the longevity of the Earth, the longevity of humanity, because this is just one of the many ways I can see the world coming to an end in the pretty near future, which is kind of sad. But in more optimistic and less destructive tech news, we have several new products that were launched this past week, and man, it has been a busy week in technology. So first of all, we have the new OnePlus 2 smartphone that was recently revealed. It features a 5.5 inch 1080p display, a Snapdragon 810 octa-core processor with three gigabytes or four gigabytes of RAM, depending on which model you choose, a 13 megapixel camera sensor with OIS, optical image stabilization, a five megapixel front facing camera sensor, a USB type C connector, a metallic and sandpaper build construction, a 3300 milliamp battery, fingerprint scanner, and runs Oxygen OS on Android 5.1 Lollipop. It's priced at $329 off contract for 16 gigabytes of storage and three gigabytes of RAM. And you can also choose the $389 version which has four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of internal storage. And uh, that would be the preferred option because it doesn't have a micro SD card slot. So you can't expand the storage and it's only like, what, 50 bucks more and you get four gigabytes of RAM. It'll be available starting in August with the infamous invite system. So best of luck to you guys if you get an invite. Uh, I'll be sure to send out invites if I have any extra ones on Twitter. Um, so make sure you're following me there at BowHD. But uh, the price is pretty damn good, less than $400 for some pretty high-end specs. Now, it doesn't have NFC, it doesn't have a micro SD card slot, it's not a total flagship killer like they're making it out to be, but it's a pretty damn good phone, at least on paper, and I look forward to testing it out. If you guys want to see any hands-on footage, I'll be sure to leave a link to the PhoneDog hands-on video 
that Marco posted not too long ago. But Motorola also announced a bunch of new devices. The Moto X Peer Edition is their newest flagship. It features a 5.7 inch Quad HD display, a 1.8 gigahertz Snapdragon 808 hexa-core processor, three gigabytes of RAM, a micro SD card slot for expandable storage, a 21 megapixel rear facing camera and five megapixel front facing camera with an F2.0 aperture, a 3000 milliamp battery with turbo charging, and it runs a very pure version of Android 5.1.1 out of the box. The best part about it is its insane $400 price tag. So it doesn't cost $700 like many of the other flagship smartphones that we've seen in the past of this year and even in last year and the year before. Um, it retails for $400 off contract, which is pretty insane. And you do get Moto Maker with that price. So with Moto Maker, you can customize the accent color, the back cover, the front cover, like all sorts of different things. You can have like your name engraved in the back. All of that is included in this price. We also have the new budget-friendly Moto G third generation, which was announced, and it features a five inch 720p display, Snapdragon 410 processor, 13 megapixel camera sensor, and IPX7 water resistance, all for just $179, which also includes Moto Maker, and you can upgrade it to two gigabytes of RAM, and 16 gigabytes of onboard storage for an additional $40. The other device announced was the Moto X Play, which is not going to be headed to the US, but it's a pretty decent mid-range device. It features a 5.5 inch 1080p display, a Snapdragon 615 processor, a large 3630 milliamp battery, 21 megapixel camera sensor, two gigabytes of RAM, a micro SD card slot for expandable storage, and a 4G LTE with water resistance, and uh, Android 5.0 Lollipop. So between the OnePlus 2 and the Moto X Peer Edition, we have two flagship smartphones that don't carry the flagship prices. It's pretty insane really to think about how much you're getting for $400. That's really not too bad of a price at all. Now I haven't actually used either of these two devices. I do look forward to testing and reviewing them in the near future. Um, I did however pick up the new Moto G third generation. So that should be arriving here very soon. I kind of look forward to testing it out and seeing how it compares to the other budget smartphones to hit the market like the Idol 3, Zenfone 2. Um, but overall, I am leaning um, more on the Moto side of things than the OnePlus 2. Both devices run a very pure version of Android Lollipop, which is something that I always like to see and I always look for. Um, but one thing or a couple things that are really making me lean more towards the Moto side of things um, is the fact that it has a micro SD card slot it has a QHD display, it has Moto Maker, so you can customize it. It has front facing stereo speakers, which is huge. Um, and the fact that it just runs and works with pretty much every carrier here in the US. It also has NFC and the world's fastest battery charge time, which is kind of neat, kind of unusual, but kind of cool. Um, and it's only about $10 more than the high end OnePlus 2 model. Um, now, obviously I can't decide. I haven't used either of these devices, and once again, I look forward to testing each one out, but at least on paper, I'm kind of leaning more towards the Moto X Peer Edition. The other news that I want to talk about is that Windows 10 officially launches today, assuming you're watching this video on July 29th. It's a free upgrade for Windows 7 and Windows 8 users, and it has a, just a ton of new features and improvements um, more than I can even include in this video, but some of them include Cortana support, a faster web browser, integration with Xbox, and an official start menu. I'm really pumped for Windows 10. I'm mostly just excited and curious about the new features and improvements, and just to see if it's any better than Windows 8, which I'm assuming it is. Although I did just buy my very first Apple computer, a 27 inch 5K iMac, which you can see pretty much behind all my videos, um, I'm still very much a Windows guy at heart, although I am slowly adjusting to Mac OS. But I'm just gonna leave you with that. I wanna know, first of all, which device you prefer, the OnePlus 2 or the Moto X Peer Edition. I also wanna know what your thoughts are of Windows 10. Do you guys like the OS? Do you not like the OS? Will you be upgrading? Let me know your thoughts, and if you guys want me to cover anything about Windows 10, let me know, and I might cover it here on my channel or on PhoneDog. Either way, just make sure you're subscribed. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up as it really does help show your support. You could send in your top news tech story suggestions on Twitter using the LWIT hashtag. But uh, with that said, guys, as always, I'm BoHD. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and sticking to the end of this video. As always, I will see you guys in the next one. See ya. I will see you guys right back here in the next one. See ya. 
what that was. What was that? What was that? Blooper reel. Get really close to the mic. Hi, guys. Get really close. Okay. Um, 